Oh, kia ora koutou and welcome to this uh, latest Zui in our Nga Pautama Mata Whenua, uh, web series, Practical Geos Mapping Wananga for those interested from Iwi Māori Trusts and, and other interests. Uh, Ko Dwayne Tokoingwa and I'm joined this morning by Holden Hohaya. Morena koutou. From uh, Manaki Fenua. Now, I'm really feeling quite privileged to having Holden here this morning. Um, Holden is the General Manager of Māori Partnerships at Manaki Fenua. And I was uh, stalking Holden on LinkedIn, and man, he's into some awesome stuff. Um, so, Holden is a member or of the UNESCO Global Geoparks Expert Advisory Panel. He's a trustee for Experience Wellington. He's trustee for Te Aro Papakainga, uh, Te Aro Pa Trust. Trustee for uh, Taranaki Whanui, uh, Ki Te Upoko o te Ika, uh, the Port Nicholson Settlement Trust. Uh, he's the chairperson for Te Runanga o Ngāti Maru. And I'm very pleased to have him uh, joining us this morning to show us a bit about his QGIS uh, experience. So just to hand over to you. Uh, Holden, if you just want to uh, introduce anything else before we uh, get into things. Kia ora. No, I think, um, oh, te mea nui, uh, he mihi mahana ki a koutou katoa i tēnei ata, ka nui te mihi. Um, ai, no, no taranaki a hau. Kia ora. Ah, kia ora. So, uh, over to you, Holden. What would you like to show us? Do you want to start sharing your screen? And, uh, awesome, yep. Ka pai. Just get into it. Okay. Can you... Uh, good to go. Good to go. You can see that? Yep. All right. Well, what I'm, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to go through a, a full-on, kind of a full project from start to finish. So there'll be a whole lot of different um, things, all in the QGIS QGIS environment, so um, with the objective of making a map like this, can awesome. you see that? Nice. So this is a this is my my iwi Ngati Maru um, back in Taranaki, and you'll see there it's got an inset map, it's got an overview map, I think they call them, eh, Dwayne? Yes, inset. Yep, inset map. Um, it's got a legend. This is uh, the land cover database, which shows the different vegetation cover. Yep. That's actually a Manaki Fenua layer, so you can get that from Manaki Fenua. Um, it's got a scale bar, it's got a north arrow, and it's got a label. So we'll go through all of those things. So I'll get rid of this now. I think I'll put it back over on this screen. Always helps to have two screens, eh, when you're doing maps. So, um, um, how long have you been using QGIS, uh, Holden? About, I started in lockdown, bro. <laughs> yeah. I remember, so, I remember you posted some, your, your first couple of posts and I thought, oh, awesome. Great. Yeah, they were rough ears, rough ears. <laughs> but you learn fast, eh? You learn fast. If you're keen. But, um, so yeah, so this is the QGIS, um, environment. This is just a, um, this layer here is the aerial. I think this is courtesy of Lindsay, eh, Dwayne. The base map, yeah, yeah, um, base, map. base map project. Yeah. I like using a couple of different base maps. The dark grey canvas is handy. I'll turn off my Pudangi farm. We just bought a farm, Ngati Motor just bought a farm. That's that little bright little bit you can see there. But the base maps are available all over the place, you can get them from. Well, different places. Um, but for this map, we're going to use the aerial base map. Um, I'll go through some other layers that I use a lot because I do a lot of maps from a Māori perspective for different iwi groups. You know, so this is Arc Site. You had to, you had to pay. You've got to pay for this. Is the irony, eh? You've got to pay for the Arc Site layer. Most, the vast majority, if not ninety nine point nine percent of those archaeological sites are ours. And yet you have to pay for them. <laughs> Go figure. But anyway, um, TLAs, territorial authorities. Rivers are handy to have. 
mud eyes. You can get this layer. I, I can't remember where I got this layer from. Is it from? It was from a colleague at Manaki Fenua. TPK, I think, have got a uh, mud eye too. Yeah. Property titles. They sharpen up as you, as you drill down. Now, Crown Forests, that's probably a one that will be of interest to a number of listeners, possibly. Just fire any questions through if, if you've got them as I'm going through. Yep, for sure. Um, the dock layer, now that's a, yeah, one third of our land cover is dock. Māori land blocks. Land use capability, oh, that's, I've just done a, done a map in Taranaki of land use capability. That's a Manaki funeral layer. I think what we'll do, we'll get into it now, eh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the iwi areas of interest are the things that you want to do if you're interested in iwi areas. Um, and this is available from TPK again. And it's a single layer. So you have to extract. So this first thing we're going to do, oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to have to get out of my floating meeting control. Hang on. Oh, it's gone. First thing we've got to do is, uh, I think it's called export a shape. Yep. So what you do is you, you click, you left click on your iwi areas of interest layer, then you right click, then you open the attribute table. Now what you want to do is zoom in on the, only on the layer, the shapes that are visible on your map. See that? Show features vis visible on map? Yep. Okay, now I'll have to get out of there. Oh, hang on. I'll zoom in a bit because I know where Ngāti Maru is. Oh, the good thing about this one is it's actually got the... Um... I'll find it. Hang on. Here we are. Now, loading uh, doesn't like macrons, eh? <laughs> yeah, I figured out that's it's something to do with UTF-8 encoding. Uh, if you ever see that, then use use UTF-8 encoding. I don't, yeah, it's hard to uh, to repair as well. Here we are. I've narrowed it down a bit. So that, the way I narrowed it down was I went to show features visible on map. And I can see that that is the one I'm interested in. So currently I'm in the attribute table. So this is where you do this mahi. So I've highlighted, I've left clicked on the number. And that there's more than one way to do things in QGIS, by the way. But this is the way I've learned how to do this thing. So I've left clicked on there. And then you'll see what happens. See, it's highlighted. Yep. So then what I do is I go back to my layer, I right click, I go export, I go save selected features as, and I go file name, Ngāti Maru. And where's, where is this going to, uh, Holden? Where is um, it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, on, on what heart. I know, yeah, well, what, what happens is I just, if I put it in the file name, it just seems to go into your project or somewhere. Into my project, yeah. See there, it's gone into my project as Ngāti Maru. Yep. So I can now, oh, just a trick for for learners. If you're working in an attribute table, always remember to switch off, deselect the attributes you've selected. You can see that there's an attribute way down here that's been selected. Yep. Um, and the way you can see that it's been selected is you can see at the top here. Can you see right up the top here? Yep, can see that. There's selected one. Now, the way you deselect that as you go to this little thing here, it's very small. It's hard to see, but this is a deselect. There you go. Cool. It's just good uh, hygiene, I think. It just helps you not get confused when you go back into that attribute table and there's still some selected features you can't see and you next minute you're all confused. Um, does that make sense? It sure does. I know exactly what you mean. Because otherwise, any operations that you do against that data set is only going to apply to that one or two selected items. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you're, you're, you're only wanting Ngāti Maru. So what I'll do now, I'll switch off, and there we go. That's step number one. 
Um, what I like to do with areas of interest is make them boundaries rather than one single shape file. Yep. Um, make change. Oh, I don't know what the right words are, bro. Change the, <laughs> change the properties. Yes. Symbology, maybe. Change the properties. So I go to properties. I go to symbology, and I go like this. Actually, I might make it yellow because when I was looking at the map the other day. You become a, a bit of a perfectionist when you get into this stuff. Yeah. So to, to change the bit the so this is this is the symbology I've currently got. I can change that symbology to a different color by rotating that around, dragging that around, and to make it super bright, you just move this thing like that. Click OK. There we are. That's better. Okay, step one done. Um, shall I pause for questions or no? Just keep going. Keep going, bro. Yep, okay. all good. I think everybody's just sitting there thinking, oh, this is awesome. And just what? <laughs> Hard to know, man. Hard questions. to know. A few questions at the end, but yep. Okay. This is the first time most of us are seeing this. So, okay. To right. So, the next thing you want to do to make that map that I showed you at the beginning is you want to um, add. Uh, you want to clip. You want to clip the land cover database into this Ngāti Maru area of interest. To do that, you go to Vector Geometry Tools. I oh, know. Hang on. Geoprocessing Tools. Clip. Input layer. Sorry about all this mess here, but basically, this is in my my layers window. You put the input layer, you go LCDB version 50, uh, version 5. You do that because you've already input, you've already loaded up that layer, right? And the overlay layer is Ngāti Maru, the one that you just made. And then what you have to do, and this is, this is another little trick, mm. <clears throat> you need to go in the clipped um thing what you have to do is go like this save the file and call it uh, call it something that you'll remember it Ngāti Maru land cover so for those whānau watching that are wondering what is a clip and 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 the rest of it my thinking is it's basically the same as taking a pair of scissors and you're cutting out inside the Ngāti Maru area and you're keeping that data and making it as a separate file. Yeah. And God willing, it won't take too long. Uh, all good. Ah, here we go. Okay. And that's so, a new piece of data there now, isn't it? There's a new piece of data, and because you've saved it to the file, it's for some reason it shows, I don't know how this all works, but it shows up in your layers window just above the one that you've already made. So it's called Ngāti Maru Land Cover. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this is it's not anything like the um, land cover database that I, the land cover map that I showed you at the beginning. And that's because it doesn't have a QML file attached to it. Jump in if I get the terminology wrong, Dwayne. That sounds good. So what you need to do is you need to apply the QML file. QML file is basically a style file. It's the colours, doesn't it? It's the colours. Standard kind of colours. So again, you have to go to properties and you'll have this QML file because you would have got it from somewhere. Manaki Whenua. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know go, something works there. You go style, load style, click on those three dots. There's the QML file. Load style. Click OK. And then we, there we go. Beautiful. All right. How are we going for time? 20 You're minutes. Good. Yeah. You're all good. Plenty of time. All right. Um, now, there's, you might recall, I'll share, the, I'll share my original map. Can you see that? Yep. yep. So, what, what there is in here, it might be a little bit tricky, actually. I don't think I'll do this. 
you can you can add labels adding labels is quite fiddly and in uh, QGIS it is it is it well it's fiddly I know that much I've got no comparison because I've never used ArcGIS or anything like that but this is a this is a label that I created by adding basically adding two fields in an attribute table but it's probably I think we won't I don't think we'll do that Holden question for you part yeah. from Nico um um, when you access Manaki Fenwa layers, do you automatically get the QML files? Of <laughs> or it, do you need to, to know? It, yeah, it's in part IT now because when I first yeah. started tutoring with QGIS, um, we've actually got a um, well, short answer to the question is you have to get it from somewhere. And now I got it from the guys who actually built the LCDB layer, the land cover database layer. It's publicly available, you know, it's, it's like any other data, well, most other data, but it's, you've got to get it from that place. And I've, I've always been able to get stuff from the inside, if you like, from my organization, because I work there. Whereas if you can get the LCDB from the Manaki Fenua LRIS portal, L-R-I-S portal, I'm not sure if you can get the QML file, but just sing out if anyone needs the QML file, the tiny little files. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can put a copy for everybody in the, uh, we've got a resource folder where we store miscellaneous files like this. I think it'd be awesome. Cool, cool. Yeah. I've got heaps of QML files for a whole bunch of different layers. Now, just while we're on this, before we go to the next mahi, if you... Look on now that you've got Ngati Maru land cover and it's a, this little palette means it's a what, Dwayne? Uh, polygon. Polygon, there you go. And if you click on this, there you go, you get all the cover land cover types. And then if you go, you can tutu around here, this is indigenous forest. You can't really make it out. I'll turn off my quite aerial. Hard to spot. So if you if you've got a nice light back background, yeah. you can see where all your indigenous forest is. Right. You can see what's what while you're inside. A lot of high producing grassland, low producing grassland, exotic forest. So you can play around in there. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. You just click once you've created that. Uh, polygon with the different land cover you can get in there and see what's what um, I'll turn my aerial back on for those fun I wondering when where to find those backgrounds um, if you go to that that um, hide slash pi uh, Add that into that's the document we use with all kinds of links in there, and there's links, I think. Um, yeah, the Toy Toot Fenwa Lins ones, there's also the Topo ones there in Lins. Um, the Hillshade might be, I, I know you can get it from Manaki Fenwa, but also from Lins, just depends on whether you're using web service or if you're downloading it. The Hillshade, I think I got just randomly off. Off the internet somewhere. Did you download it? Download the file? Or I can't it? remember what I did. I think I. I think it, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> but you can tell when you hover over it what what it is. So it's a map server. So I attached it as oh, a map server. Sweet. Yep. So that's another another trick for learners is well, once you've got something loaded up, all you have to do is hover over and it should at least in the base maps and it should give you what it is so i've loaded it, the hill shade as a map server oh, that's totally and Thanks. so on yeah cool um i've gotten myself distracted now what was i doing <laughs> oh just having general oh, here we <laughs> Here we go. Uh, back to the Ngati Maru map. Yep. So, right. So what we'll do, we'll just make this map. 
Yep. Um, so now we're ready to generate it as a printable map. So nice. this is the next thing, and this is. I mean, you could you could stop right there, and you'd be happy with that, maybe you know. But then you'll want to go. Well, how do I print this and actually have it all done up like this, with a, you know, an inset map and all that stuff. To do that, you've got to go to this place. You go to project, new print layout. Don't name it just yet. You don't need to name it just yet. Oh, I'm going to have to do some. And this is what happens when you go to new print layout. You get this thing here. Start with a blank page. You get, you, get a, you get a blank page. Now, to make your page bigger like that, you can you can just move your mouse. What's that thing in the middle of the mouse, that tracker thing? Scroll. Your scrolly thing in, in the middle of the mouse. But to get more subtle changes, you go control. See? Yeah, nice. Because you want to get it as big as you can inside your screen, screeny thing. Okay. So that's about as big as I can get it. Then what you do is you go add item. And then you go add map. And then you go like this. Okay, so that's that's a little bit smaller than what I might make it a little bit bigger. So you've got to go back to your original map to do this. Make it a bit bigger. Yep. And bring up your print screen again. Oh. Oh, here's a here's a thing. Get rid of that. Um, well, you know what that'll do. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's good context. Yeah, but what, what if you want to reposition it? What you have to do is you you have to go like this. Go back to your original thing. Yep. That's make it a little bit linked, isn't it? They're somehow linked. Yeah, make it make it a little bit bigger, and then try again. It's whatever works, bro. It's whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah. Gets the job done. There That's better. I like that better. Okay, because not because I know how big my 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 legend is gonna be, my label and whatnot. You you kind of get you get into a little pattern of your preferred way of doing maps. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to add a legend. And now everything you're doing is it's is it's picking up from your original map within the QGIS environment. So you go add item again, add legend, and if you recall, I put it down this right hand side. Okay, now it's come up with a whole bunch of stuff that you won't know what it is, but that's because it's all the stuff that's in my layers window. So to tidy it up, you make it smaller. And this is really annoying, I know. But then you go, as you know, I won't. To tidy it up, first thing you do is you go, only show items inside linked map. There you go. There we go. There we go. So that's another thing to bear in mind. When you're in this environment, the print layout, when you click on something, that's when all the options come up in this right-hand thing. See mm. how I've clicked on, clicked on, I clicked on that, and it's changed the item properties. I click on the legend, and it's changed the item properties again. So now you'll see that I've gone bigger than the map. So I need to do something about that. And then what I do is I make this smaller, and oh, it's not working. Little trick, and I learned this the hard way. It took me <laughs> forever to find out how to do this you go resize to fit contents you unclick resize to fit contents yep. and I tend to just ignore base maps you can actually tutor you can edit your, your legend but we won't do that here just just remember to 
to unclick resize to fit contents, and then you can play around with the size of your contents. Nice. Okay, the All right. Okay, then we can get bigger. Okay. So we want to keep Ngāti Maru. We want to keep national data sets. We want to keep the title Ngāti Maru land cover. What we might want to do is make the background transparent. In fact, we do, because you recall the original map. It's kind of hiding half of your map, isn't it? It's hiding half the map, and it's and half the half the interest of this map is what's outside the Ngāti Maru boundary as well as what's inside it. Yeah. You can also make this inside what's inside it transparent, but yeah, that's for another thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are in oh I have to remind myself what I'm doing. Here we go. Right, so we go background. So you'll see here I'm clicked on my legend because it's Yep. Yep. I clicked on my legend. And then we go so we go background to, to make it transparent. Jeez, I hope I can remember how to do this. It's all good. Is it that slidey thing there? The the kind of the grey? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, I figured I did it another way, but however, that works. It's always a couple of different ways to do it, eh? Yeah. But now you'll see, okay, so the 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 legend items are black and you actually want them to pop out right yes. so you go to fonts and you see font color is black right now so you, you go down there again you play around with your wheel actually i, I had green on my original map because eh, it was a kind of a green themed map color is obviously very important <laughs> So you could match this with, like, if you had Natsumaru had a corporate branding scheme, yeah, for example. Absolutely. Kind of yeah. Well, you just would play around with this color palette. Yeah. Definitely. Now, so and then you unclick away from it, and it goes thing. Click back on it. Now I'm just gonna chop it. There, I'm gonna chop it down a wee bit. There's not many orchards, vineyards, or other perennial crops in my map anyway, so I'm just going to get rid of that word crops. There might be certain types of crops that you don't Orchards, want. vineyards, or other perennial. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Now, the other thing you can do, and actually I'm just looking at my original map, you can, you can put a border. The border is always quite good to just make it look tidier and to do that you put you click on frame again here's your color make it a green frame and if you want to thicken it up a bit actually i'm going to thicken it up a wee bit because it looks a little bit thin this won't be exactly the same as my original map right but Okay. You get the picture. You get the picture. To thicken it up, what you do is, I can't remember what you do now. What do you do? You go to um, frame thickness. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory, eh? See how it's thickening up? Yep. Right. That's good. Okay, that's good. That'll do. Now, the next thing you do is you do your north arrow. Someone once told me that a map is not a map until it's got a north arrow and a scale bar. <laughs> yeah. It isn't... I, th I could be um, here then. The first, first time you go to um, a map course, a cartography course, you know, they talk about scale bar, north arrow, legend title yeah um a bunch of other things i'm going to get told off for forgetting um, <laughs> that's uh, all right that, that, as well maybe data source oh, real. Who, who made them things like this but yeah can get carried away <laughs> yeah well i've got i've got lots of people in within manaki fenua who've 
given me helpful tips along the way. And that's one thing I, for some reason, sticks in my mind. Do a north arrow and a scale bar. So to do that, you go add item, add north arrow, and then you just, oh, actually, I put it over here, didn't I? That's okay. I put it and just put it wherever you want it. No hard and fast rule. Star Trek style. I approve of this <laughs> content. Are you a tricky? <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Add scale bar. Click on that. And I put mine down here where it was going to sort of pop out a wee bit. We've got quite a big row here, 220,000 hectares. Just a wee bit. And just for for those that are interested in kind of the numbers stuff around QGIS, you can find out how big your rohi is or how big your shapefile is by your um, attribute table. And if it's not already loaded in as an attribute in your attribute table, you can create that hectareage using the field calculator. Maybe we do that some other time and do those labels in another session. Okay, now the last thing, because I'm just looking at time here, is the we're going fine. The inset map and the <coughs> map label. The map, what do you call that? Map title? Yeah, title. Okay, we'll do the easy one first. Oh, although that, um, that area on your map of yeah. That would be more like a yeah map label. Yeah. This thing here, which yeah. is kind of in a, in a not in a very helpful place, it sort of melts into the background a bit. I, in hindsight, I probably would have put it on the side. Yeah. But that's the thing we can do. We can show you how to do mm. in another session. Yeah. Along with, your, you know, using your field calculator to get how much hectareage of indigenous how much hectareage of whatever else to do the kind of number crunching. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a an inset map. But before you add the inset map, just so you don't, because the thing to remember about this is your, your map and your print map that you're laying up now and your original map are linked. So you've got to be careful if you're going to do stuff with more than one map on your map, if that makes sense, to either, oh, yeah, I just, oh. you just got to lock layers, okay? <laughs> and that way you can tutu around with an inset map and it won't change your overall map. Does that make sense? It does, yep. Okay, okay so you've locked both your, you've, well, and to do that, you'll see what happened there. You've got to lock push lock layers first, tick lock layers first, and then lock styles for layers. Then what you do is you go down here. And it's called an overview. That, that's what it's called, an overview map. <clears throat> now, what I like to do, and what I've, what I've done with this map is I've used a different background for my overview map. But in order to do that, you need to change your original map that it's all linking to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm back in the original map that it's all linking to. I've unclicked Arial because I want to use the dark. And I'm going to take, I'm going to unclick the boundary, and I won't explain why because it pops out. Yeah, it, po it pops out too thick. So, and then I've downsized it a wee bit, okay? Yep. And then I've, then I'll bring back my print layout. And I'll go add item, add map, just the same way as you did before. I'll put it in. What did I do? No, I actually put it right on the edge. These are important because not everybody can kind of get a feel for the scale. Now I can see Paranaki uh, Maunga yeah. there, but it's quite hard to see because I can't see Topo on the right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, how far is that? How big is that? So having this is really useful. And this is exactly where the in, the 
overview map comes in handy because so I'm 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 lucky enough to be working with a guy who's from Germany and he's he's a he's a uh, geospatial modeling specialist and he's because he doesn't know the country very well mm. he's a real stickler he always says I, I I flick him all the maps I do when I'm tutoring around and he says oh yeah where is that though and I say well it's you know it's it's obviously here and he goes, well, I don't actually know the terrain very well. So inset maps are handy, Yeah, I guess, was my key takeout from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And the only other thing you need to do now is add a label. I mean, I'm happy with that inset map. You can you can tutu around with it. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever works. Yeah. But that's that gives you a sense. The key objective with an inset map, of course, is to give you a sense of the overview. Mm -hmm. um, and the last one we'll do is add a label. And to do that, you just go click where you want your label. And it was down here. So this be for your title, your map title? My map title, sorry. Yeah, my map title. But it's called a label in the menu there, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yes, it is. Add label. Yep, it's called a label. Now, remember, you've got to click on it when you want to do with it. You want to make the, you want to frame it. And I'm keeping with the green theme. It's yeah, Ngati Maru's corporate colors uh, in the greens as well. So that's quite cool. Yeah, it just so happens. Probably um, in one of those options you can specify, I think, uh, what they call a hex value, which gives you the exact green. Yeah. Right. But yeah. For now. But I think don't worry about that for now. But yeah, I know what you mean. And, and the hex value will be a set number, and then you just punch in the number. It's like six or seven numbers. It's like FF, one, two, three, four, something like that. Yeah, rather than having to do it by eye. So I'll thicken it up a bit. Okay, you'll see I'm still in the label. Map title, label, actually. We'll call that label because that's what Q just calls it. And then I'll just go up here. I have no idea what lorem ipsum is, but anyway, that's your default. Some, old, some old Latin they use, I think. There's a whole story about it. Uh, um, another just... for another time. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do if you want to make a, a map label that's got a – that's centered around the, you know, that's mm -hmm. um, right in the middle of your frame is you've got to go under f appearance, center, and middle. And then you go, oh, I just I want to make macrons. Yep. Oh, how did you do that? Oh. The macron swap. Can you see that? Yeah. How do you make that come up? Because um, those you have to click down the bottom right. You click on that Windows button and the space bar. But that's mm -hmm. not a Q, that's not a QGIS function. That's yeah, a, a function that our computers, Windows, yeah. Mm. That's if you've got Māori as it is. Yeah. Language. So you go Ngāti. I'm going to go caps again. Oh, it's, sorry about this, guys. No, it's all good. I only learned how to do this last year or late last year. Oh, real? So it's copy, paste, mm. copy, pasting. Well, that must be an easier way. When are they going to come up with a Māori Macron friendly keyboard, man? That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. There is a cool plugin for Chrome that automatically picks up from a dictionary. It's fantastic. Saves oh, true. Yeah, but doesn't work with QGIS. Okay, so it's obviously needs to be made a little bit bigger there. And that's under font. And that's your font size. You're good to go, man. So then you just go layout. Now, I t I've just figured out a cool thing. So mm. if you export it as a PDF, it's not as good as exporting as an image. This is the key message I want to 
convey there. And the reason is the exporting as an export as image makes it come up on your screen without all the PDF um, control features app around it. Export as image. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just call it layout 38 and I'll put it on my desktop. I'm just doing some things over here yep. that just clicked up. I'll just go save and it'll disappear. See this little green thing down here? It's just, yep. rendering. It's, it's rendering and it's going to take a while because it, re and that's the good thing about the save as image. It seems to render it as a higher resolution than the PDF. Yep. Yep. And that's really handy because when I finished this map and did it as a, PDF, it came out about 4 or 5 meg, but if you do it as an image, it comes out about 12 or 13 meg, and you can zoom in on all that aerial, that that high, that high kind of detail of your aerial imagery, and it's really um, high res. Yep. Okay, so now it says that it's thinged it, so I jump out of here. I'll get out of here. I'll get out of here. There it is there. And I'll show you what I mean. Mm-hmm. So now you could send that as an attachment or you could put it into a PowerPoint. You Absolutely. Print it off. Yeah, you could send it as an attachment as long as you can send more than because this mm. see how see how high res it is. Oh, I tell you what, there's a good there's a, a thing that I think Google made. It's called a, a website called Squoosh. Squoosh. Um, and if you drag and drop your file into your picture into Squoosh it will give you various options to optimize it. So it will reduce the size. And yeah. if you still couldn't get it below you know, 10 megabytes, say, then you can resize it a little smaller. Good to it, know. Good to know. Because push, if you use image, this will be bigger than 10 meg. See, this one was a nearly 14 meg. Yeah. There's a couple of different image types too. You can go PNG, which is the... Sort yep. of standard for graphics, but um, the older style uh, JPEG or JPG will will also give you comparable quality, not quite as good, but also much much smaller. But depends yep. what you're using. Yep. As well. Absolutely. Ports and things you don't want JPEG. I need to go on one of your courses, bro. <laughs> oh well, I know there's a series. You could come to that every Tuesday. So that's it, Barno. Um, yep, we've just made, we've just recreated the map that I showed you at the beginning, which is this one here. And the only real difference is, well, this is, oh yeah, see how, see how I made the, the, see how this one here, hmm. the yep. boundary doesn't quite pop out. Yeah. Yep. So I've made the boundary pop out here with the yellow, and it's these little, little details that make the difference between a map and a, and a cool map. Yeah. In my view, but um that's just me, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, that's me. That is marvelous, man. Kilda Holden. That is Stop fantastic. sharing. Oh, you're good, bro. Uh so we have have a few minutes for Patai. If anybody has some uh questions or comments, uh feel free to Oh here we are. Uh you can see those. Can you bring up the chat, Holden? I can. Yeah. Just bear with me and I'll stop sharing. Yep. Well, 19 uh, chats. Yeah, so Mia's just saying there, just the comment, this is amazing to watch and the level of our cultural impact assessments have just reached a new high. So kia ora, Mia, up there in White Off. Awesome. And comment there from Perahira. Kawaniki, Holden. Kawaniki, eh? Kawaniki. <laughs> If you've got any follow-up queries, just um, happy to share my email, my work email, and yeah, yeah, we can do a follow-up session if people are interested. I well, love QGIS. Definitely, will be interested. Uh, it's just whenever suits you. Let's let's do it again. Um, Tuesdays, bro. Yep. Keep it simple. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that'd be great. Oh, has anyone ever customized QGIS so that it's easier for non-technical? That's a good question. It's a free and open source thing, so I'm guessing it's not been. There is kind of like a manual you can get online if you go and go to the QGIS um, 
homepage, website. Yeah, but but the thing is, it's changing all the time. So the open source community is improving it all the time. So just to answer your question, yes and no, because um, no sooner do they create a manual, I think it goes out of date because people are tutoring with it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's um, it's kind of aimed at people who might know a little about GIS as well. It's you know it's a prof- it's called a professional desktop GIS software. It does not real. You know, everything that the Esri ArcGIS um, tool set will do on a desktop um, doesn't have the same integration of suites How did you learn? the tools, but yeah. It's, it's, How did I learn QGIS? What support did I have? Sorry, Dwayne. Um, yeah, I I was really lucky. I still am very lucky. I work for Monarchy Fenwa and we work in the geospatial kind of land, land environments so mapping is a huge part of our of our business and our science and the research we do. So I'm able to call on people and I ask them those random queries I can't find the answer to online. So you know I'll just email my mate and say, "Bro, how do you how do you do this?" And he'll when he's got time he'll just come back and show me how. Um, but if you if you do want to start working with QGIS and you've got a random query that you can't answer online, just flick me a flick me the query because then I can flick that to the QGIS person who's a specialist within Manaki Fenwa and within you know a couple of days normally no longer than a week they'll come back and go oh yeah you just do this or that or I don't know <laughs> and there are so many users out there that you know even if you just search your query in Google like um, you know how to add a layer to QGIS or how yeah. do I export from QGIS uh, yeah yeah, that's exactly that's exactly right, Dwayne. You just you just you just ask Mr. Google, how do I so for example, you know those those um those heat maps that you make? I could show you some, but I won't. Um but I tutored around, I just went, how do I and I figured out that the technical term for it is a choropleth map. And I just Googled how do you make a choropleth map in QGIS? And there's this really cool YouTube clip by I think he's an American dude. Well, you can't see him, but he sounds American, you know, maybe Canadian. And he shows you right, steps you right through how to how to do a choropleth map. So I know how to do choropleth maps now. And that was just by asking Mr. Google. Yeah. I'll put a link on it. For those of you not sure what choropleth means, it's kind of those blocks like um, census blocks. You get deprivation blocks. You can and and also of course land blocks is a type of Chloropleth, yeah. Um, yeah, there's lots of stuff in there. Yeah, it's it's to answer that sort of question, you just you just kind of ask, find out, and I'm sort of wanting to become an expert at QGIS, and so I'd I'd welcome any queries, and if I can answer them, I'll answer them myself, and if I can't, I'll ref- I'll find out who can answer them, you know. But do go first to the internet. Yeah. You'll be amazed what answers you get on there. Cool. So, Holden, how how long do you think it would take you if you had to learn QGIS again to get back up to where you were? If someone had the time and inclination to just to do evenings, weekends, whatever, um, as we do. Yeah. I, I re, you know, using the, this recording, you can, you can follow it step by step as well to see how you've done it. And of course, those other YouTube ones, you can, you know, you have it on your phone even and you pause it mm. and then you do it on your laptop. That's exactly right, yeah. So what is your question? How long would it take? Yeah, how long do you reckon it's taken you to feel confident? Confident enough to come on this um, and give a demo to this little group, for example? Uh, like, that's a good question. So within a month of tutoring around with QGIS, I thought, oh, I'm just going to jump in there and um, put, a, put a pānui out to the iwi and Māori contacts that I've got mm-hmm. and show them what I've learned so far. Um, but to do something like um, and it was it was pretty rough, you know. And I was tutoring around, and 
Um, but to answer your question, I think it would take you about, it would take you a year, I reckon. Well, it's taken me a year to get to here, right? Yeah, just and over just a year. Getting familiar, having a play. Yeah, and, and it's also, it's play, play with it, man, because you, you know, the, no, the number of times I've just tattooed around and discovered how to do something. Um, yeah. And play with different, you know, work in a catchment, then work in another catchment and do the same thing that you did in the previous catchment and just keep, keep building on what you, and, and it's like, it's like, um, it's like exercising. You kind of have to exercise every day to stay fit and remember how to do things. Yeah. I think the other thing is when you see that data somewhere else, you don't have to recreate it. Like you don't have to draw the catchments because places like Niwa have created yep. catchment layers. MFE makes those freely available. They the do. catch is how do you find the right one for your rohi and the ones yes. that interest in how do you manipulate it, but that's the tutu. Um, and we'll, that's the tutu. We'll, yeah. we'll do more sessions on how to find those data layers and then also how to do them, how to use them, access them in QGIS and any other tools as well. But so far, this is probably one of the more um, hardcore kind of GI sessions we've had. Because up up until about now we've done sort of the the softly softly, the the Google story maps, the, some of the more um, easier stuff, I guess, the more beginner stuff. But I think it's a good time for us to start getting into some more um, applied tools. Cool, man. Yeah, and awesome. Google, you just is free; anybody can access it. And I think if you're if you're a real geek, you can even get it on your phone or tablet. But it works oh. on. Um, Windows, Mac, Linux. If you if you have, if you're using Linux, then psh, you'll know how to use QGIS easy. But, um, yeah. but yeah, it works on both Windows and Mac. So yeah. Do that. The other the other cool thing I, I just there's something about it being free and open source mm -hmm. that um, I think is a really important thing to keep in mind. So so some random global corporate like Esri or ArcGIS is not clipping the ticket on the way through, man. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's it's cool for that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you, Holden. It's been great having you join us for this hui. Welcome. Zui. And this recording will be available for everybody perhaps later this afternoon, depending on how we go. Uh, worst case, later in the week in our um, Pautama Matapunua folder. So I'll just put that link on here, Haere slash Pautama. And that's, of course, where you can access all the previous recordings, about 20 on there now, um, plus any other random files. So maybe if um, if Holden will uh, share us one or two of those uh, QML symbology files, maybe we could add those there with the video for this. Uh, as well. Um, so, big mahi to you, Holden, for coming along today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's great not having to do the demo myself. Uh, I'm not sure which one I appreciate more, actually. Um, but yeah, it's it's been great having you with us. And we'll just finish up with uh, Karakia. Now.